A new coat, Austin? No, it's never worn. It looks new. Thank you. 
I'm trying to get bribes. Be quiet. I don't want anyone to miss it. Okay. Do I want a corn dog? No. I'm I'm not eating corn dog. Um so real quick. Let's start. Uh, and who are you two? Dasha. Dasha. Last name? Pinkle. Pinkle? Okay. Kai. Hi. What's that? Kai Olson. Kai Olson. Greetings. I'm uh, Mr. Wallace. Um, I have a quick question. And I'm addicted to caffeine. Yes. This for Ryan's parents. You want me to take it to him that he's in Barlow's right now? Okay. You want me to take it over there and make sure. No, we'll see him during six. Okay. Let's give it to him during six. Okay. There's your guy. There's my guy. Is he shirtless? Uh, there is a no. note on your desk. I don't know if that's the same guy. Why did you run like that? Why did you cut? I am a man. That he's walking. Oh, you know, it's, 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 let's stop. <laughs> he's, you know, he's my hero. Leave him alone. All right. Um, is, did someone say they had a question? <clears throat> he has a call. Okay. It's not an emergency. It's not an emergency. Okay, so real quick, uh, give me a highlight from Christmas. Okay, Libby. I got an instant camera and a record player. That's two highlights. One highlight. Okay. This is econ. You guys need to figure out, like, you know, if I say give me one, don't give me two, right? Like, if you go to a bank and I say give me a dollar and you hand me two, is that going to do you any good? No. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. So basically, don't be Victor. Don't be Victor. Cool. Now, have you used the camera? Like, have you been? I actually have to buy more films because I need that. Yeah. It's expensive film, like a two pack. So, like one. Has 10, uh, oh, so it's not things. digital. No, it's not. It's awesome. No, it's just it's the little camera. camera. Oh, you, you said instant? It's the Polaroid camera. Oh, I didn't hear you say instant. Or yeah, it's an instant camera. So I got, it came with a two pack of film, and so I had like 20 shots. So I had to buy another one. But to buy another one on Amazon, it's like $16. But plus shipping, it's like $22 for a two pack. For 20 shots. Welcome to Econ, guys. Uh, You're going to learn something about supply and demand. No, that's a You get a whole pack of film for like $5. So, what are you going to do people complain about them buying things that cost more money? Is that what we're going to listen to? It's an expensive. You know, that's what I love about Ernesto. He is a poet of the people. It's like, really? You guys want to complain? You got a camera? You know what I got for Christmas? My old man punched me in the arm. I have okay? It. I don't got no freaking camera. I got the So why don't you just be quiet and take your damn pictures and spend your money it's on your... Expensive. Yeah, it is expensive. <laughs> but for my record player, I did find some awesome records with like a dollar a piece, and they have no scratches whatsoever on them. Was this at Dimple? No, actually. It was in like a really player. tiny shop. It, it, they're in like the back corner. <laughs> Supposedly, one of my friends, excuse me, Austin, I'm trying to give you guys some intel. Off of Watt Avenue, if you guys like go hella north on Watt, past 80, there's a like, um, I don't know if it's a cafe, some diner or something. It's owned by a Greek family. And inside of it, so they have like coffee, there's, um, they sell books and records. 
and a buddy of mine who's really into music goes in there and he buys like and it's the same kind of thing like a dollar and i think he says like you can get vinyl like a buck for three albums and he says there's a lot of really good old vinyl in there like some good like he found like you guys know the band the stooges yeah. Yeah. if you're into like you know iggy pop's original band you, this is a buddy of mine's an old punk rocker and so he found albums like that at this place so off of Flat Avenue. I'll see if I can get the name of the place. I hate that when someone says, oh, there's this really good, it's this place, it's like in North Richmond and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, what's the name? You know, I don't remember. Do you remember the name? <laughs> what did I just say? No, nah, I can't remember the name. But yeah. supposedly it's, well, I was hoping like I'd say this right. and someone in here would be like, oh, yeah, Tellies. And, right, because that's a Greek name. Do you got some Led Zeppelin? Do I have Led Zeppelin? I got a lot of Led Zeppelin. I got, um, I want to Garage sale. Mm -hmm. This guy has 200 records. Mm -hmm. They're all from the 70s. They're all originals. Cool. So I got for 50 bucks. For 50 bucks, right? That's good. I found them south. Okay. Oh, guys. Got to be one of my girlfriends. Huh? Hold on, hold on. You're in for a ride. B14 Wallace. Hey, what's up? What's up? Yeah, it's one of my girlfriends. What's up, baby doll? Who's your baby? Yeah. The wallet is an inheritance. <laughs> Seriously, he hates the wallet. Yeah. Wait, wait, are we sure? Okay. You know, I got students right now, and I can't say what I really want to say, but I think you know what I would say. That's, uh, I mean, did you see the final grade? It's like a 23 out of 25. No, that really pisses me off. I want to kick a wall. Okay. Can we put them in the top for two? Like what? What way? So like, what? What are the? So okay, one other thing too is, um, would you feel comfortable? Could you play it down and send an email to the teacher at CC and just say, hey? Um, just seeing, I, I noticed, uh, I noticed a, uh, that there was a really good score on the final and was wondering if, uh, uh, I'm going to go to that person who's passed. And just act like, you know, just, you're, could you do that? Okay. But you know what? No, don't CC. Okay, BCC. What the hell is BCC? Wait, there's a thing? You can blind copy? Seriously? This is like learning how to use my cell phone. I didn't mean, like there's things that I find out in show. Okay. Right. Yeah, we're gonna have to come up with um No, I, I got you. Do do whatever you need to do, and and just say in that email, don't, don't or don't like CC. Or you can do the GCC, whatever you call it, um, and then just say, I know before the break I was talking to Wallace, and my understanding was that he was trying to work towards the, so just wondering if I saw the panel, and he was asking about the grade. So wondering what he got. Experience. Wait, wait a minute, he was in with me. What did he have six? Oh no, he was in robotics, but. Hey guys, I'm sorry. Um, um, career change and study skills. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, yeah, and then maybe um, we can call that. Um, I'm gonna. Uh, do you have access to my to my roster right now? <coughs> He's not gonna be. No, I'm fine. I'm right here. Did, did he did he pass out? Are you laughing? That sounds hilarious. I'd be totally laughing at it. Okay. Um, okay, I'm asking you one question. Um, here. Yeah. Yeah. So does he need income? He doesn't need income. Oh. Okay, right. He's done with okay, he needs geography. So geography should be six period. Just put him in for study skills now we'll call him. Well, we got another. I had a number in the fall, we can get a number. You know, we can get a number. And I said I just sent you an email. Can you and I, my question was, do you have access to my can you order my doctor for the So yeah, yeah, and then and then do that CC thing. I, I want to know, like it's just like that's really cool, like really cool. Okay, but, yeah. all right, guys. I'm sorry. Thank you for being patient. Um, and by the way, uh, I, I'm okay with cell phones out right now. I got a new policy this spring: no cell phones, not even during rounds. Okay. The only time, Libby, you're hearing this. Is it, are you having trouble processing this, Libby? You're twitching. Um, the only time will be during independent work. Devin, how about you? Me? Yeah, highlight. Do you want to share or no? You can say pass if you don't want to share. I just want to know, like, if there's a highlight. Did you either get to do something or get something that really stands out? I told you during the first period. Okay. You told me during first period, but look around you. Are there faces in here that you didn't see during first period? Might they be interested in knowing? Uh, I think so. Maybe you should ask them if they would be interested in, in knowing it. Quality. So let me ask them. Would you go on a date with someone and just sit there silently and they look at you like, well, and you go, well, we don't need to talk. You talked earlier today, right? <laughs> What kind of dates do you have? That's, That's what I, 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 I talk too marriage. much. I can't shut up. That's my problem. That is a problem. But you don't want to sit there and you know just not say anything. There's another person like me. <laughs> Samantha, how about you? Oh, you got the freaking candle. Candle wax burner. I still want to know what freaking 17, 18 year old kid out there says, you know, I want a candle wax burner. Is it so That's you awesome. can melt you the would bottom of the No. What the hell is wrong with you guys? Blue. You had to plug it in, but you had to leave it off and you're not blue. Wow. But what is it? A thing? candle wax okay. burner. Okay, add a little bowl and you can put a candle wax in it and do a peel size. Then it can the wax, comes in a little container by itself. You buy it. Really it really Chris, you're complicated. My mind is swimming it's and like square, you're scurrying me up right now. Okay. You're doing drugs. No. 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 Ernesto, how about you? Oh, okay. Come on. What did you you know, as soon as you said a candle wax burner, I was thinking of something with ear wax. No. Like one of those things no. you pour in your ear and then the wax the oh two people God. not. Yeah. I mean I've never done that, but I've heard people do that. No. No. Alright. Ernesto, how about you? Are you still not talking to me? What am I doing right now, Mr. Wallace? Talking to me. Yeah, exactly. All right. 
So, um, any highlights? Uh, I mean, I went to uh, Lake Tahoe. You went to Lake Tahoe? That's cool. Yeah. Uh, and then I went to Los Angeles, LA. Los Angeles. Right. Cool. Very cool. It's Dasha, right? Yeah. Can I say, I just, I, I can I say, Privia. Yeah. Cock de la. Yeah. That's all I know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Was that good though? That was good yeah, pronunciation. That was good. Yeah, that was good. Privia, cock de la. Da. Yeah. Which is that? Is that Russian? Yeah. Yeah. I had a, so when I was growing up, my best friends in my childhood, they had a babucha. They had a, they were, yeah. They weren't from Russia, but they had a Russian grandmother, and they used to make. Uh, I would come over and they'd make Russian pancakes. Yeah. Really, so you know what I'm talking yeah. about. They're real thin and they put sugar on it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so his grandma, whenever she would hand out the pancakes, would like place them on the plate, and then she'd walk to the next person, place it on the plate, and she would say something in Russian, and the whole family would laugh whenever she put. And so I said, "What? What? What did she say?" And he said that, I, and I don't remember what it was, but in Russian, she'd say, she, it would be translated to, I hope I made enough pancakes to feed this little buffalo. Oh. That's what she would say. I thought it was hilarious. Or not buffalo, ox. This little ox. Uh, I've never heard that. <laughs> and it's some expression. That's what it, B14? Hey, what's up? I'm doing fine, thank you. You got it? They will need e-commerce. They will need them uh, very soon. I'd like to start, like, uh, hit the ground running. Probably Wednesday, or uh, Wednesday. Start to get two days Thursday. Yeah. Okay. You betcha. Any highlights from the break? Um, I like snowboarding. Nice. Oh, you're the you snowboarder junior over there. Uh, yeah, Libby. But she does, She likes to pretend. I ski, I don't too. snowboard. Oh, God. Okay, sorry, that's my fault. So anyway, so I, sorry, I, Jesus. I, I, I did. Not even gonna get him to start. Did it. Oh, Ernesto, go to one race. Watch you. I don't know. This time, all right. She said, "Well, B14." Hey, no problem. Yep. So what? Othello. No, do not turn in Othello. You're still working on Othello. Okay. Thank you. You went snowboarding. What? Um, boreal. Boreal. Was it? Is it just the fr the front side of the resort is open right now? Is it just? Um, the... I know. Yeah. Yeah. I figured there's hasn't been a lot of snow up there, so it's all man-made. Cool. Austin. I had. <clears throat> Wait, what? Oh, Any highlights from the winter break? Why are you looking at you her? You told me a highlight during the break. I don't want to say it. You don't want to tell me? I mean, you should. Uh, so I was at my friend's house or something. We made a campfire. And you burnt the house down. <laughs> no. Whoa, Jesus. I had a giant bag of MEDs. And so we would light them and shoot them in the sky. And we took, well, his mom came out with two margaritas to celebrate the New Year. And uh, I had a margarita. She makes <laughs> money. <laughs> well, the next morning I woke up, I was kind of over the morning. And I went to Tahoe, saw my grandpa. This isn't one highlight. And it felt like crap the whole day because you drank margarita. Good. Uh, See, yeah. I'm thinking as you're telling me this, we had a whole bag of M80s, and I'm thinking, this is why old people hate teenagers. Because of stuff like this is the beginning of a story that's going to lead to some like. Tragedy. Somebody's house is burned down the neighborhood. Okay. But don't drink. Don't drink exercise. At all. Well, don't drink until you're 21. I, you know what? It's poison. That's all I have to say. Yeah. I got my hands chewed on my grandfather. Yeah. Chewed up my dad. Good. Okay. And my older brother, Tristan. Good. You got a brother named Tristan? Yeah. That's a great name. I love the name Tristan. You guys know Tristan and Isol? 
is sold uh, is sold egg around. Some people pronounce it. I can interrupt you. I'm the teacher. I'm allowed to do this. Yeah. If you don't like it, then you can become a teacher and interrupt your students. And I can interrupt you as long as he says it's okay. And she doesn't listen to a damn thing I say anyway. So she interrupts me whenever she wants. And then Libby sits there and just oh, snarls. And, I'm not a snowboarder. I'm a skier. <laughs> You got diagnosed with that. That's a freaking highlight? Yeah. So I think blood this is, this is like you go on a date and someone <laughs> says, so tell me something about yourself. I have eczema. What? Okay. No, I, I, I'm sorry that you got diagnosed with high oh, blood pressure. Cool. Right. And that's all the more reason you should never drink. I got one baby or one lady. Okay. Well, you're working on that stuff, right? No, it's actually higher. Okay. You're eating a lot of salt, maybe? Okay, I'm not going to try to psychoanalyze you right now. Oh, that's sad. Hi. Hi. Any highlights? No. Okay. Andrew? Not me. Not you? First letter. K. Hi. Kyle? K-A-J. K H A Kai. Yes. Oh. I like Kai. Kai. Um, I well, I got a really nice sweater because this was really nice sweater. Not really warm one. Uh huh. Yeah. Austin asked if it was cashmere. Although you might not want to respond to him because he's the kind of kid who has M80s and drinks margaritas. Yeah. When he's not supposed to. So he might lead you down a really dark path. <laughs> Ooh, Argyle. I like Argyle. Nice. Very cool. Right on. Tyler? Um, um, I went to Oceanside with my grandparents. Oceanside? Yeah. Like down by San Diego? Yeah. Okay. That's a nice place. It was really nice, yeah. What's by the ocean? It's a beautiful place. Okay. And so you went to, that was the highlight, just being in yeah. Oceanside with your grandparents? Yeah. Awesome. And it was sunny um, most of the time. Okay. Daichi? Well, you have a highlight? No. Uh, okay. It's very well, you got another can of Pepsi. <laughs> Did you drink Pepsi over the break? Yeah. So, so that's one thing that's, that was funny. When, uh, was it for our first period, when you met uh, Penson, I uh, story with a uh, uh, piece of no cheese. Uh -huh. That reminds me of one story that happened during break, actually. Okay. Um, my mom and I made pizza, and we were we, uh, we were making it. We tasted really good when we ate it, but we realized something was missing. It took us maybe like about a week to realize. Oh, we didn't put cheese on it. <laughs> It took you a week to realize you had pizza without cheese? Yeah, like know. you wouldn't realize it right then. I don't know why. It's, I don't know both of us who just didn't notice. Yeah. It was just kind of funny though. I did, uh, it happened to me a couple times this break, I um, was looking for my phone, my cell phone. And then each time as I'm looking, I'm like talking to my son and I'm going, hey, you know, where's the son? And he's like, and what, what come, this combobulates me is when he drives, and so, like, like nothing is as it is. Like I'm getting into the passenger seat. But anyway, like I'm talking to him, I'm like, and I'm like, kind of pointing at him, like, dude, I can't find my phone. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, <laughs> it's in my hand. Nico, how you doing? All right. Tikanis. He's Greek. I don't know if you guys know. That's all. Wait, I know that. I know some swear words. Your stepdad taught me. Finally saw, by the way, them. Saw your mom, your sister. Yeah, you don't seem very excited that I did. You don't like it when I come over, huh? It's just worlds are colliding. It's too close. Could you imagine, like, me showing up at, like, you're eating dinner and I show up, like, hey, what's going on? You're going to eat all of that. Can I have some? No. Anyway, any highlights from the break? No. Okay. Would you like to share a highlight? I have another one. Yeah. <laughs> Is it as long as yeah. the last one? No. Thank God. Okay. No. Um, so I have two grandsons, they're one and a half and two and a half, and I had, we had planned to babysit them New Year's Eve. And at one and a half and two and a half, they don't stay up till midnight, so it's going to be okay, you know, they go to bed around eight. 
So, on New Year's Eve day, I started feeling like I had the flu. So I thought, okay, I can't bail on my daughter. She had already made plans, so I had to babysit the grandsons. She brings the grandsons over. One of them's got a bad stomach. The other one's got the flu coughing. So me and both of them were sick on New Year's Eve. It was actually kind of fun because we watched Bugs Bunny in between um, Aiden throwing up and Austin coughing and me with a fever with blankets all over me. And my husband stayed far, far away, but then, but my, the two and a half year old, the next time he saw his dad, his dad reported to my daughter that he said, I had so much fun with Grandma Chris. <laughs> so, so we were all sick, but he had fun. So that was good. So I had fun too. And I went to sleep. They actually did go to sleep at about eight, and I went to sleep at eight, and I was awakened at three. So I missed the New Year. Awakened by a barfing <laughs> But Bugs Bunny saved I'm going to have to day. explain what the word highlight means. <laughs> That's it. The implication of that. Okay. Okay. I can do well in Um. Highlights. Yours. I don't have any. I, mine was very honest. I helped my daughter buy a car. She bought a new car. Um, and then I tried to get her to start a Roth IRA. Listen. Okay. It's econ. Put away cell phones. Put away cell phones. Put away cell phones. Put it away. Away. If you want, if you want to transfer out of the class now, because I'm making you put away now would be a good time. Talk to your counselors. They're probably going to go. I don't care. Go back to the office. Okay. Let me tell you guys something right now. When you can get a Roth IRA, got it? Put in the minimum fifty bucks. A month. It'll come out of your paycheck. 50 bucks. Now, the one thing so you don't get it. Is that a cell phone? The concept, put it away. Do you understand this? Not, I understand. No, I, I, that doesn't matter. This is life advice. And it's related to econ for those of you who have econ. A Roth IRA, it's a pre tax. No. Yes. It is a pre tax deduction. Get one. <clears throat> you guys are going to read about it later in the semester, so we'll get into details, but that's my advice to you. So my highlight is, after helping my daughter buy the car, and I thought, okay, now I got a little leverage to get her to do something responsible. Like, the, And you would think that, hey, I just like signed my name to this and gave you a bunch of money. Maybe you would listen to me. Do you think that happened? You know? Excellent. It did not happen. And she wouldn't. She goes, so this is what she said. So I'm going to take the money out when I'm like as old as you, and how am I going to enjoy it then? Oh, gosh. Yes. And I go, do you think I'm like the walking dead? Yeah. I live a very rich yeah. and fun life. I go to clubs every night, and I dance. I mean, uh, <laughs> okay. girls and girls. Get a Roth IRA. 50 bucks a month. That's all you got to put in and you will appreciate it as it appreciates by the time. A Roth IRA, yes, you will get it back. There's there's penalties if you close it out early, if you don't. So typically what it will do is it will be deducted from your paycheck. But even if you aren't working, you can still put money into it. Here's the thing. Here's the carrot I dangled to my daughter. I said I would match it. Whatever you put in, I would match that still wouldn't freaking do it because she can't see past tomorrow right get a rock because it's only 50 bucks think about all the frivolous crap now maybe you don't spend money on frivolous crap but the frivolous crap you spend money on you know say you go out to eat you buy a soda that you, there's a buck two bucks right at a restaurant I'm telling you B14 wallets. Hi. What's up? Okay. I always Okay. Oh, that still hasn't? Okay.
I got you. I got you. You know what? Can you? So, so she's with. Tell her that uh, today. Obviously, that fell through. I know the person that she's talking about, who she spoke to. It's our program specialist. So, um, if you can send me an email, get her email. If you can from her, CC. You know, put her on it, and I will respond. I will contact the person. I will explain um, the situation. So that should be started immediately. It could be a screw up at transportation. And that, but I know that that supposedly was put in that they were okay for transportation. And this was a, an email I got. And now I assume the person at district who okayed it went ahead and did. Okay? So because I was never told to uh, initiate. So uh, the person is Stacy Aarons. Do you know who Stacy Aarons is? Okay, so um, so she's with uh, district, and um, but if you email me, and then what I'll do is I will send an email to Stacy, and I will CC the mom if that if, so if you could because I don't have her email address. Okay, and we'll try to get it done now. Does she need a ride home today? Okay, if she's stuck, and because I know Deanna's here, tell her uh, tell her. I won't now, I, you know, obviously there's legal things, there's things that need to be signed, but I don't have a problem if they're in a bind and she needs a ride, I don't have a problem uh, driving around with it, okay? So I'd be willing to do that, um, but I would like, if, if the mom is okay with that, then I need her to email me, uh, somebody to email me that, okay? Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, so that's my highlight, econ. I have a problem with that. I'm on the phone. That's okay. I have a problem with that because I'm off the phone and you're still on that. I don't care if you ski, snowboard, surf, or ride a freaking thimble with wheels on it. Put that damn thing away. <laughs> the rest of you guys, let's talk econ. I say economics. Um, I want to do a little word association thing. Let me... You guys want to hear my drone lecture? So thanks for the enthusiasm. Baby. Um, when I say econ, what do you guys, what do you guys, what do you think we're going to study in here? What does economics mean? You guys have a debt, like what is economics? Like you guys know what biology is? What's biology? Living things. It's the study of living things, right? Yeah. Okay. What's economics? Yeah. It's the study of money. Sort of. Okay, so when I say economics, you guys are thinking money. Uh, you said an interesting word. You said currency. Yeah. I like that word, as opposed to money. One of the things you're going to learn is money. You guys know what money is? Like I say money to you, what do you guys think? What, what image pops into your head? No images pop into your head? Dollar bills. Dollar bills. Currency, right? A type of currency. So money is a, you guys know what a medium is, if I say a medium and art? Libby, what's a medium and art? Like, give me an example of a medium. You're an artist, right? So is uh, clay a medium? Clay is a medium. Is paint a medium? Clay, painting, watercolor, sculpting. Right, drawing. so watercolor would be a painting medium. So money is a medium of exchange. So money doesn't have to be dollar bills. Dollar bills, coins and stuff, that's all. Currency, or what we would define as currency. But money could be, um, different things can represent money, okay? So for example, like if you own a bakery, um, how do you determine your worth? Imagine you're a bakery owner, okay? I like to use bakery because I love bakery. How do I know what's your worth? What am I gonna look at? Am I gonna look at how much money you have in your cash register or in your safe? No, what would I look at? What's that? What you look like and what you have. What you look, okay, what you have. Let's, let's look at what you have. What do you have in that bakery that's worth money? The machinery. Did you say products? The product, so you have the raw, the resources, right? You have all the things to make it. What would be a product that allows me to bake, uh, let's say bread? 
Flour. Flour. What else? Um, and, okay. Well, it's a product. It's a type of product, but to, that allows me to break bread. Bake bread. Fine. Oven would be machinery, though, right? What are the natural resources that allows me to bake? Flour, baking soda, baking powder, eggs, sugar. Good. So if I, you walk in, if I'm an assessor, I'm going to assess how much your company is worth. I'm not just looking at how much money you have in your pocket or how much money is in the till or how much money is in the safe. Now, you might have money in the till and you might have money in your business bank account, but I'm also going to look at things like eggs. I'm going to look at sugar. I'm going to look at flour. What else is worth money in here? A lot of hidden costs, right? What else do you need in order to bake bread besides flour? Can you take dried flour, dump it into a bowl, and start mixing it? <laughs> what else do you need? Water. You need water. So you need utilities too, right? You need all of these. So you need infrastructure. You need a building to bake in, right? Does this, all this stuff make sense? Yeah. This is all, and so we say that this is all systemic. It's systemic of a money-making system, okay? So all of these things that I was talking about, water, flour, these are all something that we call resources, right? You have natural resources. Uh, do we have financial resources? As a banker, let's say you want to expand your business. You want to build, like, you have orders right now, you're producing, say, 1,000 loaves of bread a month. But someone calls you and says, hey, I'll give you an example. I worked before, when I came back to Sacramento in 2001, I came back to work for our family business. And our family owned a production bakery, okay? And while I was there, my uncle was really excited because McDonald's, someone from the McDonald's Corporation came and said that, hey, we want you guys to make our apple pies here in this distribution area in Northern California. And my uncle was so excited, and he's like, do you know how much money we could make by doing this? Okay? We ended up not being able to do it. He had to turn the business away. Because we didn't have the infrastructure to handle it. Because all of a sudden they're saying, okay, in order to do this, this is what you're going to need. And we had these resources, and we were limited by the size of the building, the size of the land that we produce something. You said this is a factor of production, right? Like you own a bakery. So I got a question for you guys. And in order to do this, now if my uncle wanted to expand, what would he have had to have done? So he, had, he would have had to have used financial resources, right? Because in order to expand, you gotta do what? Buy property. You gotta buy property, or you gotta add on to the property that you have, right? And is that free? No. I wanna add another, room, another area in our bakery to handle this, yeah, it's not free. You gotta pay. Who do you gotta pay? The government? The well, yeah, property. you know what? You're kind of right, because I'm gonna have the to get... The owner. The property. My uncle was lucky enough to own the property. Yeah. Who do you gotta pay? The, you gotta pay contractors. Contract. You gotta build the property. You gotta yeah, build right. this area, right? These are right now. Where would you go to get this money? The bank. You go to the bank. So you go to financial resources, right? And that's all part of the system, right? So I'm going to give you guys a definition for economics right now. So that, like, you know that the study of, of life is biology, right? So economics is the study of unlimited, you guys ready for this? Unlimited. You don't have to write this down today. It'll be in your textbook. You will have to write this down at some point. It's going to go in my box here. I'm going to bullet it. And you guys are going to need to know this for the midterm when the time comes. But it's unlimited wants and demands in balance with limited what? Unlimited wants and demands in balance or competition. Because some people don't find those balances. They're competing with what? Limited, and here's a hint. We just went over a whole bunch of them. Financial, production, it's the R word, resources. resources. Okay, so you've got unlimited wants and demands. Uh, 
I'm going to write verses. This is a battle, people. So right now, how many of you would like to go visit Europe? Take a trip to Europe when you when you graduate from high school. Okay. If not Europe, is there anywhere you guys would like to go? I said, wow, that's cool. The Galapagos. The Galapagos. Do you know where the Galapagos without ocean? The Galapagos Islands are located. Hey, did you take geography with me? That's why you don't know it. Okay. I want any geography. No, no, I, 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 I'm just kidding. Uh, what resources do you need in order to go to Australia, the Galapagos Islands? Right, you need infrastructure, you need an airport, you need GPS, you need technology. But for you guys, you guys aren't going to worry about resources. Although, right now, there are people worried about infrastructure resources this past week. Why? Because what impacted infrastructure this past week that stranded millions of passengers weather right so there's natural resources that have impact on other resources the main resource you guys need to get to Europe or Australia or the Galapagos Islands is what speedboat is what money so when you guys say money in the context of economics, yeah, we're going to study money. But it's not just the study of money. It's the study of unlimited wants and demands versus limited resources. Okay? And this, we're going to look at it. What's this word right here? Anybody? Systemic. On a systemic level. So if I say, hey, you guys, you guys are going to get later on in the semester the chance to start a business. I'm going to say, hey, you're going to start a business, and you guys, and in the past I've had students, they'll sit there and they'll say, you know, when I first taught the class, they said, ooh, so my business, I'm going to sell pot. Okay? And that's what a lot of teenagers want, want to do, is they want to sell pot. And they say, so and in my dispensary or in my store, we're going to have, you know, we're going to have posters. Uh, you know, I'm going to have a, a, a Dre poster here. And, and, and this and that, I'm going to say, no, 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 no. First of all, you got to look at what's the system that you have to deal with in order to sell pot. So let's run with this. Again, license. You got to get a license. So somebody earlier mentioned, I think, government. Can't smoke your own product. So you got to deal with regulations. You got to deal with licensing. And this is, you guys see how this is it. So there's a system in place that allows you to do you something or the other. You got to find buyers. Buyer. You got to find suppliers. You got to find distributors. Question, you guys, I don't know if you guys have studied the pot issue here in California. It's legal. Okay. It's legal. Uh, it's legal and it's still not legal. But there's a big problem concerning, now I'm going to talk about money and financial resources. You guys know the financial resource issue that's tied to the sales of marijuana in California? What's the big financial resource issue? What's that? Where's all the money go? Where does the money go? Where's the, where do, well, if you had, do you think as a business, let's go back to the bakery. Let's say you make $10,000 a day. Do you think it's safe for you to sit on that money in your bakery? No. You're gonna stuff it in your pockets and walk home? That would get coffee cans. Okay, you know, now, and I love your participation in classes, but when you do stuff like that, <laughs> You remember how earlier I said, I don't care that you're any kind, I want you to listen. Now I don't want you to listen, I want you to be quiet. And I want you to do your own work. Okay, all right. Back to this. You have that money now. If you want to come back to this and have a serious conversation, you may. Okay, I'm just like you split it off. So, there. Um, so back to this. You have your money, what are you going to do with it? You're going to put it in the bank. Do you know anything about banks? They think I'm up here. Now, I have a question for you. Who are banks regulated by? B of A, the government, is it the local government? They're regulated by the federal government. Is marijuana in the eyes of the federal government legal? No. No. And they don't want to take the money. There's a lot, they say, we won't touch this money. That's what they can make money. 
Okay. So now we're talking about, so under this system, when we talk about economies, now we're talking about alternative or black market economies. We're talking about different types of economies that exist. There's the economies of the streets. You know, I don't know if you guys know this. I saw a documentary recently, and it was about in Atlanta, Georgia. And in a lot of these old, kind of poorer neighborhoods, how the local government in Atlanta, Georgia is kind of backing up because this is especially happening in African American neighborhoods in Atlanta, Georgia. There are people who are making food to distribute, to, they're selling food. Like, let's say if you want, say, you know, I'm gonna, we're talking Southern cooking, right? So you want fried chicken and you want fried okra and you want a sweet potato pie. You don't have to go to the store in some of these neighborhoods and buy all that stuff and make it yourself. You can go to somebody who's making it out of their home and they're selling it. And they're selling it for a pretty cheap price compared to what you get in the store, right? And these whole economies exist. And the government, now, question, if you want to open a restaurant, how does the government regulate your restaurant? What do you guys think? Taxes. Okay, besides taxes, are there any other ways government regulates your restaurants? Besides financially, besides your revenue, how else do they regulate your restaurant? They make sure it's like healthy. For people. They make sure it's healthy, right? So there's all these regulations, these other resources in place to protect the consumer. The consumer. And all these things I'm talking about, if you're wondering like, what? Well, it's all, again, here's the word I'm focused on. It's all systemic. So when we're talking about econ, we're not just talking about pies that are being made out of somebody's kitchen that are being sold on the street that may or may not be regulated by the local government. Okay? It's not the individual things. It's all of these kind of micro, here's a term you guys are going to deal with. You guys ever heard of microeconomics? No? Micro is what level? You think that's big or small? Micro decisions that are made on, so decisions that are made on a micro level that affect the macro level. Okay? Question. If I have, in the, I don't want to use the term black market because it makes it sound, if this alternative economy, if I'm selling pies in my neighborhood, say I make apple pies, and I don't want to sell because, first of all, I'm really damn good at making pies. And people like my I'll tell you what. You guys know Mr. Taylor next door? Yeah. I make bread. Homemade bread. Your stepdad taught me how to make bread, by the way. And I made bread. And Mr. Taylor, he came over one day. And he had some of my bread. And he says, Wallace, I will pay you to make me bread. This is so good. Seriously. Right? And if I sold it to him. Now. Let's say I send out an email to all the teachers here at Rio. And I say, or Taylor does, and he says, hey, Wallace makes really good bread. Buy your bread from Wallace. On a micro level, I'm selling bread on this really small level. Could it affect the macro level? Yeah. In what ways? Sure. So what local store might be impacted by this? All of them. It, it, it could, but what local, like, well, so you guys, what I want you to think is, where's a store close by that sells bread? You said it earlier. Safeway. You said Safeway. Right on Bel Air. Bel Air, right? At the corner of Arden and Easter, right? And if it affects them, now, obviously, you know, am I going to take away, am I going to be actual competition to them? No. Probably not. I think the only person who wants to pay for my bread will be Mr. Taylor, okay? But if these things expand, now, going back to Atlanta, these neighborhoods I'm talking about, there's probably stores in those neighborhoods that are being impacted by this, right? By these alternative economies. And that's a very real thing because if those stores are impacted, let's say you're a bagger at Bella, Art and Easter, and your manager comes to you and says, you know what, uh, we've taken a big hit this past month, our profit. We gotta let you go. That's gonna bum you out, huh? And that person still had kids to feed. What's that? That person might have kids to feed. They might have kids to feed. And also, what happens now? That person is looking for a job, right? Does that affect the job market? Yeah. yeah. 
and that drives up competition for jobs. And you know, when there's a lot of people out there looking for jobs, if I'm an employer, uh, you know, I got all these people looking for jobs. Let's see if I can get away with uh, maybe paying a little less. Like, I was going to pay people 15 bucks an hour, but they need jobs. Maybe I could pay them 12 bucks an hour. See, and so all of a sudden, now this little drop, this little ripple can have an effect. There's enough little ripples that can have an effect on a whole system, on a big system. Right? You guys see that? So when we talk about economics, we're talking about things on a systemic level. We're talking about unlimited wants and demands versus limited resources. Devin, do you know the difference between a want and a demand? What's a demand? When I say a demand, oh, I'm sorry, I said demand. You know what? Forgive me. I don't know why I wrote the word demand. Need. That's what I meant to write. What's a need? What must you have in order to survive? Food. You need food. You need fresh water. What else? A human being. What are you guys wearing right now? Clothes. Yeah, you need so and clothes I consider part of shelter. You need shelter from the elements, right? So these are so like what would be uh, so you need food. Um, do you do you need to live on pizza? What would be like right now, you guys, if, if I said, hey, um, you guys are done with school, get out there, go make it on your own, good luck. What would you guys eat tomorrow? Salad. Fish. You would eat salad. Yeah. You would eat fish. Okay. Um, where are you going to catch the fish? Do you have a license? Yes, I do. Okay. But how much does your license cost? You know what a license costs right now? I'll give you the answer. It's 46 bucks in California. Okay. But you don't have the money to buy a license. Listen, okay, now you start to piss me off again. You're like, it's like a yo-yo with me. It's like one moment I'm really happy with, and the next I want to go, well, I have a job that I got the money. You don't have a job right now. I'm sending you guys out and here, play along with this. You got nothing right now. What would you eat? A need is you gotta eat food. What would you eat? So like, okay, you have a little bit of money. What would you buy? What kind of food? You know that you probably can't survive on pizza, right? I mean, you could if you could afford it. I question, is pizza expensive, yes or no? Yes. Relatively expensive. So what might you seek out so that you can survive on a day to get you through the next week? Potatoes. Potatoes. What else? Vanilla. What do you get a lot of bang for your butt? Hey, you guys, anybody here take a health class? Here at Rio, do you guys learn anything about nutrition? Rice and beans. Rice and beans. Why rice and beans? Do you remember? Protein. What? Protein and what else? Fiber. As fiber, what else? Carbs. As carbs. You need energy and you need protein, right? Rice and beans. This is the stuff of the starving college student. Rice and beans. Dudes, dudettes. When I was a college student, I lived on rice. I was a slow cooker. I throw beans in there. I get some jalapenos, chop them up, throw them in with the beans to give it some flavor, and I make a big bowl of rice. And that's what I ate. Seriously, rice and beans. And me and my friends who were poor and paying for college, we used to laugh about it. The other day, I, I told my first period class that I'm trying to downsize, trying to save a bunch of money I want to invest up. So I've been thinking about that lately. So you know what? I just cleaned out my pantry. What do you think I found in my pantry? Bag of rice and beans. I found a whole bunch of bags of brown rice and I found a whole bunch of bags of beans. Guess what I'm going to be eating for a while? Do not light matches in this room for the next two months. Okay? I'm just telling you right now, don't ever light a match in here. Something bad might happen. All right. Um, we're just about done now. We're going to get, when you guys get your textbooks, we're going to get into the particulars. We're going to handle it like American government. We're going to build you guys up to the midterm. But econ, this is, in my opinion, the most important, one of the most important classes. I think the most important classes you can take in high school are geography, economics, weight training, and English. If you're in an American high school, those are the four most important classes. 
Yeah, economics, outside of math, because in economics, one of the things you guys are going to learn about is you guys are going to learn about a budget, and the scenario is going to be this, I'm kicking you out right now, I'm your parent, I'm kicking you out of the house, good luck. What are you going to, so, so you guys are going to look at things like if you get a job, what kind of resources do you guys have to think about when getting a job? Transportation. Transportation, there's one resource, what else? Shelter. Okay, shelter, what else? But I'm talking about going out to look for a job. Do you have to think about things like dress, clothing? Appearance. Yeah. What else do you need in order to get a job? Hygiene. Hygiene. Very good. So you're going to need soap, maybe a toothbrush. And I'm going to have me to ask if I have any gum. Okay. Uh, what else are you going to need? Okay. Question. If you interview with me and I want to hire you, but you're not there when I decide to hire you, what do you need? Well, we need to be able to communicate with one another, right? You're going to need to have a phone or some way to communicate with me. And these are all things, these are all factors in and transportation is a huge by the way. Uh, any of you guys foresee that maybe you might have to walk to work? My son wants my truck. I said, do you want my truck? I said, I want a damn pony, son. But I, you notice I'm not riding around on a pony? What do, you, what do you want my truck for so I can work? He says, I can't get a job without a truck. I said, you know, when I was 16, 15 and a half, I started working at a, um, you guys know Chung King? True story. Chung King at Arden and what? Right across from the Taco Bell? Across from right, Chung King. It's a Chinese buffet. I was a dishwasher there. I was 15 and a half years old. That was my first job. I went to Rio, those of you who don't. And I wanted a job. My mom said, go get a job. And I said, well, I can, can I borrow a car? Well, I couldn't ask her that, right? I don't have a driver's license. And I knew my mom, how do you think I got to work? Walk. Boom. I rode my bike. Guess what? When it rained, how did I get to work? I rode my bike. If I had a flat tire and couldn't fix it right away, how did I get to work? I walked. I lived in Arden Park. I lived close enough to walk. Now let me ask you guys something. In the summer, do you think it's fun to walk to work? And luckily for me, I worked as a dishwasher. Right? So I'm in the back of the kitchen sweating away anyway, so no one cared how I smelled or look. Because you said earlier, hygiene. This is, you know, these are some factors you need to think about, and there's resources you need to maintain. Hygiene, right? If I was a leader, do you think that might have been a problem? Yeah. Right. If I was a waiter, that might have been a problem. Why? Because you go up to the person and serve them. Yeah, and if my, you know, my armpits are, I got this big soaking, like, stain in my armpit, and I smell like hell, do you think someone wants to take their order from me? No, I'm not going to think I'm going to sweat it. So I got a question to you. For you guys. If I was, if that now, that job wasn't contingent upon my survival, right? I had that job to save up money so I could get a car. But if it was contingent upon survival, question for you, might I be applying with the limited resources I have for a job as a waiter? So I'd be limited by the jobs that are available to me, right? Because I'd be, it'd be a waste of my time to apply for a job as a waiter. I could be the best damn waiter in the world but I, it ain't gonna happen if my resources are limited. You guys following me here? So that's, those are the things that when you guys leave this class, I want you guys to understand. Hey, I wanna go work at McDonald's. Fine, good luck. Do you live next to a McDonald's? No. Do you have a car to get you to McDonald's? No, but my mom does and she said she'll drive me. Really? Like if you have a set schedule. Guys, you think schedules ever change at work? And at McDonald's, do you think people care about your problems on a daily level? Like, you know, they're paying you minimum wage and you're one of, say, 80 employees or 25 employees. No, they'll, fire you they'll fire you and find somebody else, right? So it's not only about this understanding what this conflict is, but it's coming to terms with it. It's finding a balance and being realistic, okay? I'm going to take that cell phone, I'm going to smash it into a million pieces.
All right. All right. You guys have a wonderful day. Humble Chimney. Well, where the hell are you guys going? I didn't say leave. Oh, okay, yeah, I didn't